Hello, and welcome back to the AQS studio. We're working on lesson six of our six panel quilts in six weeks today. And one of my favorite designs is the quilting Santa. So that's what we're working on today. And I will just warn you, if you have this panel, as I was working on this, do you see how Santa has this thread right here in his hand? Well, I wasn't really paying a whole lot of attention, but I knew I wasn't using white thread. So I'm working along and I'm working along and I thought, how'd that big white thread get in there? Well, it's part of the design. So this design is a pretty big panel, so it's going to make a really nice throw. And you can see that it has three borders built into it. The light blue, the dark blue, and the burgundy. Well, when I had decided that I was going to use red and blue fabrics, I decided that I probably didn't need the burgundy. So where did I cut it down? So that's what I'm going to show you right now, exactly how I decided what part of the panel to cut. But before I do that, you know, I use electric quilt. You all know that because I've used it in each of these sessions. Um, but it also makes it so that you don't waste a lot of fabric. You can test out colors. You can test out designs for the borders. And you can see here, I pulled out this kind of gold color that was here in the lamp and the red from the quilt and his shirt and blue, there's blue sky out the window. So that was my first stab at what did I want to do with this border. Well, so let's just move on and I'll show you some more as I work through the process. Okay, so now you can see here I changed that gold just a little bit. And again, I used red and blue and the gold. But to me, that light gold in there really drew your eye away from the center panel. So I nixed this design. All right, so then I thought, okay, this quilt has green in it. What if I use the yellow and the green? And I switched it to four patch blocks. All right, then I changed the gold to red and used red and green. Uh, but I didn't think that highlighted it as well as it could. So I continued on and I changed it to blue. Now, what this does is the blue border that was on the panel itself, it kind of brings that blue clear to the edge. The red, it's there, but it's kind of subdued. And the design itself, you know the phrase dental molding? Uh, a lot of times you might see it on a fireplace mantle where they've got blocks of wood spaced across. It might be on some detail on the outside of a porch, a house. Uh, that's sort of what this reminded me of, so that the red part of the forepatch blends into the plain red border and the blue does the same thing. So this is what I decided I was going to do. Now, I don't know how you try to figure out what you're going to do and the sizing and everything, uh, but I had measured my panel and I had decided that I would cut it to an even measurement so it would be 30, 30 inches across in the width and 40 inches down. And that would take me into the blue border, okay? So I trimmed my panel to that size. Now, the next thing is, is how do you decide what size do I make border one? Well, you can see I have my four patch blocks fit in there, and they're nine across, and they're four inches, so that means I need 30 in, 36 inches to fit from here to here, so that would be the upper border the top border. Okay, so now I have the number 36 and I'm going to divide the width or subtract the width of the panel. So 36 less 30 equals 6 inches. 
And now I need two borders, so I'm going to divide six inches. So I need to have three inch finished borders here for those blocks to fit properly. Okay, that's how easy it is. And then just as a mental note for myself, on the bottom of where, and sometimes I just sketch this out. It isn't always this fancy where I've done it. I've actually printed this out of my electric quilt program. Sometimes I just draw myself a sketch and do exactly this same thing. So I wrote on the bottom that if I want border one to be three inches, I'm going to cut that three and a half by, we already knew I needed 36 inches, so that's going to be 36 and a half, right? And border three, I wanted four inches. And so again, I'm just going to add up four inches times however many blocks are right here. And that will be the, the length that I need to cut border three. So I do that every single time though. And if you write it down, <laughs> You know, sometimes when you're sewing, you'll forget which was that measurement go there or did it go here? If you write it down, you've got it right there. All right, we're gonna work on some four patch blocks and some chain piecing. First, we're gonna have a short word from our sponsors and we'll be right back. The Ironmatic Space Saver is an award-winning ironing board. It's ergonomic and user-friendly. Strap your iron directly to it and hang it behind a door or in a wardrobe to keep it hidden out of the way. Visit ironmatic.com to get yours today. As any artist will tell you, hitting the perfect notes means finding the perfect instrument. Burn Nina. So get the machine that always hits the right chord and start making beautiful music together. Bernina, made to create. Okay, are you ready to make some four patch blocks? This is a block that is used over and over and over again in our quilt making. And once you learn how to chain piece these, you will save so much time. So the first thing I want to remind you is to print out your handout. The downloadables are available with every single lesson. And the next thing we need to do is we need to cut some strips. And I bought two yard segments of my fabric. And I did that so that I could cut down the selvage and the length and not have to piece anything. None of the borders then have to be pieced. But you'll need to cut yourself five strips of red that are two and a half inches by the whole length of two yards. And five strips of the blue. And we're just going to sew those together with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then we're going to press that seam allowance toward the blue fabric. All right. And so once you have the strips made, then you're going to cut these into, if we cut the strips two and a half inches, we have to cut the segments in two and a half inches. So we're just going to align on the edges and take my rotary cutter and we're gonna cut. And so we're gonna cut that whole thing up into two and a half inch segments. So when you do that, you're gonna end up with a whole pile of segments to make the four patch blocks. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna first of all, I'm going to put these together upside down so that you can see. But one of the beauties of chain piecing is to always try to make sure that the seam allowances go in the opposite direction. And you can see this one goes toward the blue here and it goes toward the blue there. And in many patterns, that's why they'll tell you to press toward the darker fabric. Uh, once in a while, you'll have to switch it. But for these blocks, we're going to be able to nest those seams together. Now, I'm going to teach you how to do this without using a single pin. And of course, the first criteria is you need to make sure that we have cut our strips accurately. We need to make sure that we have a fourth of an inch seam allowance set on our sewing machine. I have a guide here, but sometimes some of the machines will have a stitch that's a fourth of an inch seam allowance. 
And uh, sometimes people will put tape, and we've done that before in some of my classes. So we're going to pick these up, right sides together, and all you have to make sure is that blue matches red, both on the top and the bottom. Okay, so now let's go to the sewing machine. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to line up this corner. And I'm going to slide that underneath my machine. And I'm just going to take a few stitches because I want to make sure that I'm nesting these two seams together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the bottom one forward just a little bit. And now I've, I've laid the other one on top and I'm going to tug on the bottom one until it nests right smack with the other one. And you can feel that. You can feel that right here. It's nice and smooth. Okay, so I'm going to stitch. And so I'm using my finger as the pin. And once I've gone over into that seam allowance, I'm going to come back and I'm going to line up these edges and stitch to the end. And again, I'm using my pin, and my finger as the pin. Okay, then you're going to pick up the next one. Making sure that you have, and I'll tell you, I try to sew on the same color every time because then I have no doubt that what I'm doing is putting them together correctly. So if I have the, the red on the top, and so we're just going to stitch and we're going to add the next one. I'm going to stop. Again, I'm going to slide that bottom one forward so that I can tug it until it, do you see how I'm just tugging right there until those lay flat? Now I'm going to line up my corners, and away we go. We'll do one more. You see how I've not used a single pin to do this? Putting the pins in and, and taking the pins out uh, is just a few seconds that you don't need to spend. Okay, I'm going to, again, I'm going to separate them. Pull. I'm going to tug until they meet in the middle. Line up my corners. Okay, so now here's the test. When you open it up, does it meet exactly right there? Yes, it does. Exactly right there. and exactly right there. I have to tell you, this, this quilt has 46 four-patch blocks in it, and I did not have to rip out one single joint because it didn't meet. But again, it's just really making sure that you have snugged and nested those two pieces together. Just hold your finger there till it slides into the machine, and no pins. All right, so you're going to continue making four patch blocks until you have 46 of them. And I will tell you that you may want to make sure that you have a couple extra of these, and I'll tell you about that when we start sewing these blocks to the quilt. So now that you know how to make the magic of chain piecing four patch blocks, we're going to take a short break and we'll be right back. Okay, so now we've made a pile of four patch blocks. Now we need to sew them together. So you know me, I like the visual element. And so I'm going to lay these out so that I know red, it alternates red and blue. So I'm going to pick up 
these two blocks and I know I'm going to sew this seam. So now the thing you want to check is we want to be able to nest these again. And the red seam allowance goes that direction. And on this one, it goes in the opposite direction. We're going to start and I'll do exactly the same thing. I'll get started by aligning the seams or the edges, aligning the corners. Okay, again, I've just taken a few stitches. I'm going to pick up and now this time I, I'm going to hold my bottom one and I'm going to pull my top one until it nests right in there. And again, I'm using my fingers as the pin. And when I sewed these, I sewed them in groups of two because then you can go ahead and just keep feeding them in there and then come back and sew them into the strip. So once you do that, again, let's just test it because by nesting those seams, you can see that my joint is just exactly the way it needs to be. Perfect. All right, so let's talk about adding your borders to the quilt. I have already added the red border. And so I, again, I did that. I always measure. I measured my top, added the red border. Uh, actually, I added the borders on the sides first. And once you get those on, then you're going to measure again to be able to get the length for the top and bottom borders. And then I added, uh, I think I added the, the, the piece blocks on the top and bottom, and then I did this in one big long strip. Uh, but I needed nine blocks to go across the top, and I need 11 to go up and down on the sides. When you get ready to put this border on, uh, like we've done on some of our other quilts where we had a piece block, you want to make sure that you put the piece block on top and the border on the bottom. And the reason you want to do that is that you can see that we have a lot of seam allowances that we're going to cross as we stitch this. And they're pressed in different ways. This one's open, then we have this one, and, and then these meet in the middle. Um, so that you can control where those seam allowances go. Sometimes if you put that on the bottom, just going over the lip of your machine, sometimes that'll just flip that seam allowance right over, and then it won't match up. Okay? All right. So after I added on the four patch border, something funny happened to me when I was putting this together. I had put the top and bottom piece blocks on and when I got ready to put the side borders on, you want to make sure that you double check because here's what happened to me is I had two blues and two reds meeting in the corner. Now there's nothing wrong with that. That looks okay except that every corner won't look like that. So what I did was I cut off one on the last block. I cut off one and sewed it on the other end. And that will happen if you have an odd number on one side and an even number on the other side. We have 12 on this side and we have nine on this side. And so that's the solution if you end that. But you want to make sure before you sew those side borders on, you just lay it out and double check it. You may have to do the same thing, depending on what size your panel is and what size you've made that inner border. So that's a lesson you can learn. And I have to tell you, I stewed, I stewed on that all night because I couldn't figure out why doesn't this come out right. And and what I determined, it was way I'd sewed these blocks in fours. You know, I'd sewed them in, in two blocks and then I sewed them in four blocks. And I ended up with it being the wrong color orientation in the corners. So just 
slip one off of this end, sew it on the other end of this strip, and you can see now that it goes around the corner just like we want it to. Okay, so I have sewn all of the borders on for the third border. And again, is that you're just going to measure, cut your strip. This one was cut three and a half inches. This one was cut four and a half inches. And I have one more border to sew on. And so I want to show you exactly how I measured. And you know me, I like to fold my strips in half. And and cut half. Now when I measured this, I knew that I needed 64 and a half inches for this border. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up my ruler and I'm going to make a mark at 24 inches. Okay? Okay, so you take 24 from, six, uh, from 32 and a quarter would be half. And so I need eight and a quarter inches. And so that's right there. And so now I can cut. So again, I'm going to line up my edges and I'm going to cut my border. And now it is 32 and a quarter inches. Now, if you've watched any of these programs so far, you will know how I always do my borders. I cut them to length, first of all, of what they need to be. And this is one of the things that will help you make your quilt so they end up straighter and the edges are straight. The one thing you don't want to do is to cut a piece of border and start at one end and sew it to the other end. I, and the reason that you don't want to do that is that you're going to work in fullness from the feed dogs feeding that fabric in on the bottom. We don't want that. That causes those ripples on the side of your quilt. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the midpoint of my quilt. And it's nice when this ends up on a seam because then we know exactly where it needs to be. And I'm going to put a pin in the border. So these are the two points that I have to match up initially. Now, the other thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you put your quilt border on the bottom so that we can control the top seam allowances. Okay, so here's my pin. You can see this makes a really nice size throw. So I always start and I pin the center and then I'm going to come back and pin the, the end. Match those corners. And now we're going to flatten it out on the table. And then I usually just walk my fingers to the middle so that I don't disturb that. Then I'm going to pin the opposite end and I'm going to pin, just add a few pins in the center just to hold this while I'm sewing. Okay, so now it's time to press and we will have our panel quilt all finished. And while I do this short little pressing, and so you can hear a short word from our sponsor, and we'll be right back. Tracy's Tables has all of your custom sewing table needs. Visit tracystables.com to see the complete line of unique tables, carts, and shelves. 
and all of Tracy's tables are made in the USA. All right, so now here's our whole quilt all finished. And I really just want to point out, you see how the fabric that I have for the red has different values of red in it? Which really kind of reminds me of what's happening here in Santa's shirt. I took my panel with me to Hancock's at Paducah and laid it out and tested different reds. Also, the blue that's in here is a little bit different. And so you can see again, I got kind of a mottled blue to help pick up both on this blue and the blue that's here in the quilt. So there is our quilted Santa throw that would be really fun to cuddle up under over the holidays. It also would look really pretty laying over a sofa or a chair if you just wanted to use it for a display. Well now, for this particular uh, lesson, I have a bonus for you. And I'm going to take this quilt away and I'm going to re be right back and show you Eagle in Flight. Well, you know, some of these panels are horizontal rather than being uh, in a shape that we would use for a throw. So then you have to figure out what do I do with them. And I ordered this panel and the full panel was this. But I decided a design like this would make a perfect wheelchair quilt. And wheelchair quilts are sized a little bit differently because number one, I'm sitting here in a wheelchair. Number one, it has to be able to tuck under on the sides just a little bit and you can't have it so long that it's going to get in, in the way of the wheels. So I decided I'd cut this down and I cut it down to, I'm going to use finished sizes because I think it'll just make more sense of what I'm doing. And then you know, anytime you're designing, you're working in finished size, only when you get ready to cut the fabric are we going to add seam allowance. So I wanted this one to be 20 inches this way and I only had to cut off um, I don't know, maybe uh, an inch or inch and a half on, on the top and the bottom. But then I only wanted it to be 30 inches this way so that I could add on five inches here and five inches there to make it 40. And then if this was 20, I added on 10 inches and 10 inches to make it 40. Now, if you had a very slender woman that you were making this for, you maybe would only want to make it 36 inches total each direction. Um, I'm going to put this in my lap and you'll be able to see what I can cover up with this. Uh, but I want to show you what I started with. So this was my panel and this is a Kaufman fabric and the information is in your downloadable for that. And then I had a yard of Ricky Tim's hand dyed fabric. Well, when I laid this out on the hand dyed fabric, I thought, okay, so this kind of carries the blue from the sky and these pretty oranges and yellows and all of these colors kind of look like the trees. And then it went off onto the dark side over here. Uh, so I thought it would work just perfectly. Well, I had one yard of this fabric and here's what I had left. After I had cut my strips, that's what I had left. And then these pieces are the pieces that I cut off of, from the ends of, of the strips that I cut. So you can see one yard of this hand dyed fabric. And golly, wouldn't it be fun to have somebody who's close to you have a beautiful quilt like this that's a one of a kind? Now, to finish it, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, normally, we would go ahead and quilt it and bind it. But instead of doing that, because you have to think about somebody that may sit in a wheelchair for a long period of time, that do they really want to sit on a hunk of binding on the edge of that quilt? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the batting down and then lay the quilt face up, put the backing on, and I'm going to sew the side seams 
without any binding, so that it would be kind of like you were turning a pillowcase, okay? Um, but then we can quilt it after I have that done. Then on the top and the bottom, because those are probably the two areas that are gonna wear most, they're gonna get handled most when somebody pulls it up, puts it up underneath their chin. Uh, so binding makes sense there. So that's how I'm going to finish it. And just to show you the size is this will cover me up. I can put it up here underneath my chin. If my arms are cold, I could stick my arms in here and I've got just enough tuck under on the edges. And I've got enough that I can tuck it up here underneath my chin. If I wanted to stick my arms underneath here and get a little toasty, I could still do that. Um, so this is a good size for me. And so you wanna scale it to whoever you might be making it for. Well, that's your little bonus for this class. So not only did we make six panel quilts in six weeks, we made seven panel quilts in six weeks. And now I wanna thank our sponsors, Bernina who provided the uh, B770 Quilters Edition sewing machine, Branson where we'll be having a show in March, Ironmatic who provided us with their brand new ironing board, Panasonic who let us unveil their brand new latest version of the Panasonic cordless iron, Tracy's Tables who provided our table for the sewing machine and we'll be giving one of you a beautiful cutting table, and Star Forest Quilts, whose panel we used in lesson four. Thank all of them. Anytime you have an opportunity to thank our sponsors, please do that. And you don't wanna to forget to go register for the giveaway. Each of these sponsors have provided some great prizes. You have to register to win. Uh, as soon as you watch this program, go to the link that's in the description and register for the giveaway. Bernina also has a program for their Bernina ambassadors and I am a Bernina ambassador. So since you watched my program, I can send you a coupon for a hundred dollar rebate if you buy a new Bernina machine. It just has to be purchased by January 7th, that's 30 days after this last program. And here's what it looks like. I'll fill in part of it, I'll mail it to you. In the description, you will see my email address so you can send me your mailing address and I'll get it right out in the mail. $100, it doesn't come from your distributor, it comes directly from the Bernina Company. Now, if you're not yet an AQS member, I certainly encourage you to go to AmericanQuilter.com and sign up today. We are the largest quilting membership organization in the world. And I have to tell you, uh, between our staff, we're always trying to come up with new things to make sure that you have the very latest knowledge related to quilt making. And if you're watching us on YouTube, be sure you hit that subscribe button. If you do, every time we post a new video, you will get a message saying that, uh, that Quilt TV, that's our channel on YouTube, Quilt TV has uploaded a new video for you to go watch. And you never know what it's going to be. We may be talking to one of the quilting stars. We may be doing some tips. There are all kinds of things that we have at Quilt TV on YouTube.com. I hope that you've enjoyed this program and have had as much fun as I have in each of the lessons, I've showed you different ways to put borders onto panels. These, these borders can be used on any quilt that you might make, uh, whether it's a border with cornerstones, whether it's three borders that are mitered, whether you add blocks on the side of a panel and then change the scale of the borders on the edges. Uh, lots of information. I've given you something different in each of these six lessons. So this is our last program for this series, and I hope you'll join us again here at the AQS studio.